Hi, I'm Stuart and welcome to Sarnet Television. Going to take a look at a mini light bar that's available from Code 3. It's actually the Code 3 Mini Shield light bar. There you go, check it out right now with Chris. He's going to be the guy taking it apart. It's interesting. Let's see what Chris is up to. Thank you very much, Stuart. Appreciate the nice introduction. The Code 3 Shield LED mini bar, ideal for DOT, public works, or any other amber application that you may have. It's available with the clear UV resistant dome, as you see here, or with an amber color matched. So nice thing with the mini bar here, if you have this version, it's nice, clear, discreet until you turn it on, then it'll definitely get the attention that you're looking for. Also, with it being amber, having 360 as far as its output, so sides, front, rear, all in one, it's SAE class one certified. So if you're looking for something for use on your state's highways and byways that meets this requirement, the Code 3 Shield will do that just for you. The mini bar itself, very well constructed. Polycarbonate top, like I mentioned, UV resistant. So if you happen to be outside of the wonderful Northwest where it's gray and rainy, well, more days out of the year than we like. So if you're in the dust, the hot, warm climate where you have a lot of sun, you don't ever need to worry about the dome itself becoming faded over time, like some plastic from a few years back that didn't have the UV coating. So it'll look great for many years to come. It uses a, call it a supersized X-T3 LED light head inside. So the X-T3s that Code 3's had for grill applications, bumpers, several years, that works great. They took them, supersized them to get a mini bar out of the same module type. So with that, it has optics inside here that help boost the diodes and give you really nice output head on and to the sides as well. The bottom of the mini bar is polycarbonate as well. Nice black finish. Neat thing with the polycarbonate base here is, be it the permanent or the magnetic, it uses the same. So if you ever wanted to change it, you can simply do new hardware, a new harness, and use the same mini bar itself. Magnets would affix into the circular positions here, or in this case, it happens to be the pigtailed version, so permanent mount, it has mounting feet that come with it. Comes with a pair, so one for the left, one for the right. Black powder coat finish, so once these are out in the climate, they'll do well for many, many years. Plus they look really nice and clean if it's going on a black roof or a black headache rack. The feet themselves, as you can see, will raise the mini bar slightly over the flat surface that the feet are affixed to. So on the bottom here, you have two holes here, here, that is where the feet would affix into. So you can screw them in with hardware that's supplied. And the nice thing with that is the feet, once affixed, extend over the edge of the bar. So it's very easy to then mount it onto your platform, whichever it may be. Since I already have it upside down, we'll go ahead, take out the screws that hold the base and the top dome together. Bottom screws, now all removed, so I can go ahead, flip this over, and separate the components. The dome itself is sealed on nice and tight, so it definitely takes a bit of a wiggle and a forceful pull to separate the two. So with the top dome removed, give you a great view of what's going on inside the mini bar here. Center mounted electronics and flasher board. And you can see the 10 light heads mounted around here are all soldered in to the board here and central points. So the gray wires happen to be the lead for each light head. The ground is the black for each light head. 
So as you can see, rather than having a board here where all the light heads could be removed from the central board, it's soldered in so you'll have nice solid connection. So for again, DOT, public works use, you don't ever have to worry about anything coming loose from the electronic flasher board here. The harness itself goes through the base with an incorporated rubber grommet. So again, if you ever need to change out the harness, upgrading it from permanent to magnetic or vice versa, it can be removed through an opening in the base. So no extra holes to have to drill out. Slip connects here onto the flasher. So you have a lead, a ground, and the blue happens to be the flash pattern adjustment. So if you're wanting to change patterns on the fly or set it to something specific for your install, it has the user selectable flash pattern option there. The modules themselves, like I mentioned, being a supersized XT3, are a three diode. You can see they have the booster optic over them here. And again, what I can do is if I turn this up, we'll have the camera zoom in a bit here to this portion here, and you can see that the optic itself is pretty darn deep. So what this does is it has a diffuser in the front and then has a bevel optic here. So it takes the small diode, takes the light intensity, widens it to spread it into the optic here. So you get a broader fill from your diodes. So really nicely done by Code 3 with the optics here to get more intensity. The light heads, if you need to, can be removed from the polycarbonate base, and it's easy enough to do. Two Phillips head screws, and the module lifts free from the base. Has a quick connect here, so if you're thinking, well, since the inputs on the electronic board are soldered, well, if I need to remove a light head for some reason, how would I do it? Well, quick connect right here. So go ahead, give it a wiggle, the module comes free. So give you a good view of the quick connect on the back here. You can see it has an aluminum bracket that the diode and optics are assembled onto. And purpose of this bracket here, not only is it for mounting, but it also acts as a heat sink for the electronics and the diodes here. So really neat modules, really well put together. For reinstalling the module, simple enough process. Plug the harness back in. And what's nice with this is it has a specific side and bottom to it. There's only one way to put it into place. If you tried to put it in upside down, which would flip your wiring connections ground to lead, which won't make the light head work since it does have reverse polarity protection, it just simply wouldn't light up. Well, you don't have to worry about that. The connection goes in one way, so it's correct every time. And with a little snap, you can see it plugs in nice and tightly. So again, when it's mounted on your vehicle, goes into service, you won't have to worry about anything wiggling or coming loose as far as the electronics and harnesses inside. You can position it back into place here. It's actually neat. It has a hole here above the screw mount on this side as well, and those actually put the module onto two little posts right around the screw mounts so that the light head positions perfect every time. So that way you don't have something that's kicked a little up, kicked a little down, or even off to the side. So everything will realign perfect. Go ahead, take the stainless steel screws, realign those there, and tighten them back in. With the 10 modules in the bar here all being identical, taking them away and unplugging them is the same for each. Just spin it around here, give you a nice view. So you can see solid module here, so you have great side coverage. The two modules here are mounted at 45 degrees, so for off access and sides, great output there. With mini bars typically being mounted widthwise on applications versus lengthwise, the two heads here in the front and the back give you nice forward facing potency and then you have the off-axis coverage here. So definitely 
all the areas, or as they say, bases covered for your mini bar lighting on your application. Well, the inside's taken care of. And take the polycarbonate top, slide it back on here. With the top slid back down, you can go ahead, flip it over, and reinsert the mounting screws that affix the base and the top together. Also, nice little feature on the bottom of the screws here is there's a little gasket. This helps when the screw goes in and seats itself tight to keep condensation, grit, and grime from getting in into the base and insides potentially. So again, from Code 3's engineering perspective, very well thought out by protecting the screws that are on the bottom. And just so I get a nice proper seal with the base and the dome, I'm just gonna go back and forth with the screws. So that way it suctions down nice and evenly versus one side locking down nice and firm and then the other side trying to counter that down. Alrighty, just double check, all eight screws back in place, nice and tight. So reassembled here, and go ahead, take the three wire pigtail, so again, lead, ground, blue, for flash pattern adjustment. Go ahead, turn it on. We'll tuck this out a little bit so rather than it facing down, you can get a better idea of the potency here. So you can see very nice, very bright. I'll go ahead, give it a spin around here. You can see as far as the off axis, great output. From the sides as well, fantastic output. As it's flashing right now, it's a version that goes through a few different cycles. So if you're wanting something that's gonna constantly gain attention by changing, this would be a great pattern for you to use. But if you'd rather get it on something a bit more uniform or something where it's back and forth or something where all of it's flashing together, like you see here, we'll take the blue, momentarily tap it to the 12 volt source. Just go through here, couple patterns, couple taps. And actually what it's doing is you can see it pauses for a quick second after each adjustment. And what that is, is it's just the electronics and flasher module inside adjusting itself and setting itself to the pattern. So with that, once it's set, every time you take power away, then turn the unit back on, it's gonna be set to that specific pattern for you. So no need to reset every time you turn it back on from when it's used. We'll just go through a couple more patterns here. Again, you can see the pause there, why the flasher board does its thing to retain its info. And there you have it. Code 3 Shield LED Mini Light Bar available in amber to meet your DOT and public works requirements. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the insides and the outsides of the Code 3 Shield LED mini light bar. Thanks for watching. As always, Sirenet Television, what would it be without? Back to you, Stuart. I can't say anything else, except again, thanks for watching Sirenet TV.